So we will now proceed in determining the process and interface design. The analysis and design process for user interfaces is actually iterative. Okay, take note, even though that we're already in our uh, we're already in designing phase, I know that I've been telling you that in the modeling part we keep on iter uh, we keep on repeating and we keep on uh, we have an iteration but also it will also apply here in the designing part okay so again um, the user interface is iterative and can be represented using a spiral model okay the spiral model is actually implies that each of these tasks will occur more than once okay so with each pass around the spiral representing additional elaboration of requirements and the resultant design in most cases the construction activity involves prototyping here in this part it involves prototyping the only practical way to validate um, to validate what has been designed so meaning you don't need to create a complete design of the whole system all you need to do is to jump start the design process because you can improve each features or designs along the way in most cases the construction activity um, involves prototyping that's what i said earlier right so again it is iterative and even though that, uh, yeah, actually we are using a spiral model, um, each um, part, for example, in this part, we have phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, for example. So each phase, uh, each phase has its own output, but it's not necessarily mean that you need to complete the design of the whole system. Okay, so I will discuss each of that one in the succeeding slide proceed so let's talk about the interface analysis and modeling so interface analysis here okay it actually focuses on the profile of the users who will interact with the system so we are actually getting our markets right now or we are um, uh, we are analyzing who are the end users of our system okay so skill level so in the sense on how um, tactically inclined your users are, um, understanding the business and general rece uh, receptiveness to the new system are recorded and different user categ uh, categories are defined. For each user category, requirements are elicited. In essence, you work to understand the system perception for each class of users. So for example, your target user or your uh, base in your interface analysis all of your target users are all kids so make sure or all um, children so make sure that your designs are actually um, uh, it's actually colorful or it's actually um, um, it is actually engaging on their part okay that's quite the challenge but again um, you need to have this kind of I, uh, interface analysis okay so once general requirements have been defined um, a more detailed task analysis is conducted so again uh, in this phase we have task analysis as well so task we have task analysis okay so those tasks that the user performs to accomplish um, to, to accomplish the goals of the system should be identified here okay it should be described as well and elaborated okay over a number of iterative passes through the spiral itself okay so again um, after you um, you analyze um, your target users this time you will now um, get um, the requirement by using or by doing the task analysis because in the task analysis um, you will as a team you need to perform 
um, specific goals in identifying, in describing, in elaborating um, the users. Okay? So you need to do it here in this phase. Let's proceed. The next step is the interface design. Okay? It actually defines a set of interface objects and actions and their representations. So if I'm talking about actions, um, this is actually their screen representations. So that enables a user to perform all defined tasks in a manner that meets every usability goal defined for the system. For example, in the task analysis part, we, uh, we have noted that the user needs to get a series of approvals from a set of administrators. So that's actually uh, what, uh, what we actually do here in UP. Um, since I'm a faculty, uh, every month we have, this is what we call, we have CUS or Certificate of Service. We need to do that one monthly. So this, this, that is also our responsibility to file CUS. Okay? So basically, if we will file a CUS, there should be a set or a series of approvals. So, so from, from my head and to the dean. So if the head gets my approval or gets my request, sorry, gets my request, all she needs to do is to click that specific button, or for example, or um, the, um, the head or my head will receive an email notification where she or he can see uh, an approved button. So after he or she approved it, um, ap approved it, that's the time that it will go directly to the dean. So the dean would still receive uh, the same notification by email or by going to the system itself and click approve, like that. So actually, meaning he or she receives uh, several applications for that day that should be seen on the system. So it's not only in the system, but also through other notification like email notification, like that one. So that's actually your task analysis, okay? That's on the in interface design part. We are basing or we actually determine that type of design because of the task analysis that we gathered in this part, okay? Next, uh, we will proceed to our interface construction, this part. So normally begins with the creation of the prototype that enables usage scenario to be evaluated. This is the part we will try that we will create our prototype, so our blueprint. Okay. So as the iterative design process continues, a user interface tool kit, a user interface toolkit, uh, may be used to complete the construction of the interface. Okay. So we will have our toolkit here. I will give you some of the toolkits that we use in the industry later on. So let me talk about first uh, wireframe. So if we will talk about wireframe, I believe I also included, uh, I also included um, a video linked in our class, in our Google Classroom. Um, the process in creating a wireframe. Okay, what's the difference between the wireframe and also the mockups? Okay, so if we will talk about wireframes, uh, th th there are two types, by the way, of that. Uh, we have in wireframe, we have two types we have paper type and we also have digital type. Okay, for paper type, this is, uh, this is where the designers. Uh, will illustrate or draw the GUI or the graphical user interface of a specific task per screen or page, okay? Just like what you have watched in the extreme programming video I shared to you. If we will talk about digital wireframe, this is the conversion of the paper type designs, okay? So if we will release, uh, if we will, uh, sorry, if we will relate this one to mockups, so wireframe and mockups. A mockup is a static high profile 
a visual design draft of a design um, or, a desi or, or a device used to represent the structure of information. It also visualizes the content and demonstrates the basic functionalities in a static way. Okay? Unlike Warframe, mock-ups provide visual details, okay? such as colors and um, typography, while Warframes are design placeholders Mock-ups are built to give the viewer a more realistic impression of how the end product will look. Um, I, we still need to decide if uh, we will let you create a wireframe or a mock-up. But for me, um, it would be best if you will create a mock-up. But it really depends on the result of our, um, of our discussion. Uh, sorry. It really depends on the result of our um, decision. Not only me, but also Ms. Eileen. Okay? So, in the industry, by the way, guys, uh, we use Adobe Illustrator for detailed vector wireframes. Um, also, we use um, Figma okay, for real-time collaboration. This is really good because not only one designer will focus on this, uh, on this frame, but also there is a collaboration part, okay? Uh, we also use um, InVision Studio. This is for Mac users, users uh, Mac OS X users only um, for wireframing multiple screen sizes, okay? Take note, guys, every wireframe, make sure that it's already been approved by the end user, okay? So in your case, for those teams who don't have clients, I want you to assign one member who will act as the end user and make sure that this member was not able to see the wireframe first so that he or she can freely comment, suggest what, uh, what to do, okay? Since um, his or her approach, it's more on the end user part. So we need to have a... Uh, we need to put our shoes on them. Uh, we need to put our shoes. So we need to sympathize, right? Okay. Last one. Uh, we have interface validation. So for the interface validation, this actually focuses on number one, um, ability of the interface to implement every user task correctly. Okay. To accommodate um, all task variations and to achieve all general user requirements again um, this validation um, in the interface validation the first thing that we need to do as a designer or as a software engineer we need to make sure that the, 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 the task will be completed okay next one the degree to which the interface is easy to use and easy to learn. In short, user-friendly, okay? Third one, the user's acceptance of the interface as a useful tool in, he, uh, in his or her work. So I know that um, in um, software engineering too, uh, we will have a implementation part. This is where you as the user uh, we'll try, uh, actually, you will not try, but you need to um, train um, all the end users how to use your system. If you have a client, but since you don't have a client, make sure that you have, the, uh, you have those two. Make, it, uh, uh, make sure that the tasks are all completed uh, and also make sure that the degree of the interface is easy to use. Okay, so these uh, the activities described in this section occur iteratively. Therefore, there is no need to attempt to specify every detail for the analysis or the, on the design model on the first pass. Uh, on the first pass, since subsequent passes through the process elaborate task detail, design information, and the operational features of the interface. So, guys. That's the process of how to develop an interface design. In our succeeding um, videos, um, I will let you hear 
um, the experience of Miss Eileen because it is actually a good um, uh, it's actually a good basis for uh, for our succeeding puppets. Thank you.